Hi everyone, my name is Liz. I read and welcome to a new reading vlog. And it's the afternoon and I am currently reading The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier. I am that far along basically done. So I did some reading today. I've been reading this for a really long time. Like I feel like I've been reading this for almost a week, but I'm almost done and sadly is not nearly as good as the first book. It's okay like it's bordering on like okay and good like so I'm not really sure how I feel it's starting to definitely pick up and starting to actually get a little bit interesting I think I have like 50 or 60 pages left so I'm definitely going to finish this today and after reading this I don't know what I'm going to move on to but I have a stack to pick from but that is basically my update right now not as good I think this is I don't know it's like a 3.5 or a 4 I'm not sure I'm probably will end up giving it a 4 because I'm still like kind of enjoying myself I'm happy to be in this world again and seeing um, our characters again I just felt like there wasn't much of a plot even though stuff happened I just felt like there wasn't a huge focus and I kind of wish certain things were explored more. And I think if this was maybe a trilogy it, and if she kind of explored some more interesting things, then it would have been maybe better because I feel like everything is just all these little threads are being wrapped up so quickly. And so I think if she had more time to focus on these things, it would have been maybe better, but I'm not too sure. But yeah it's okay i can't wait to finish it and then just move on so that is my update for right now happy tuesday everyone so last night i was kind of reading on and off throughout the day yesterday but yesterday i finally finished the rose and the dagger and i have some thoughts about it overall i've decided to give it a four star rating because i was really still enjoying myself enjoyed reading it i liked being with the characters and i think what i realize is renee adier is really good with her characters i really enjoyed reading about shazi and Kalad and everyone else but i think the biggest problem with this book was the plot she had some really good ideas and i think it left me wishing that she expanded on those ideas that she had more time to explore each individual one i think if this story was spread over to other books so if it ended up being a trilogy instead i think it would have been a lot better i think if it was done that way the second book could be fully focused on the curse and maybe Shazi's powers and then the last book could be all about the war but since it wasn't that I felt like every new idea she had it she didn't have enough time to fully explore it and every time that plot element ended I felt it ended way too quickly so I just felt I kept on feeling like each I don't know if plot device is the right word but every time something would happen and something gets resolved every time something got resolved I just felt it fell flat but like I said I still really enjoyed myself so this was definitely still really Really good and I think it's mostly because I really enjoy these characters and I like being with them so in the end I decided to give it a four star um, like I said about it being a trilogy I think it could have gone either way I think it should have either been a trilogy or actually just a standalone and ignore the whole war stuff and just focused on the king and Shazi's relationship but after reading this like I loved book one I still really enjoyed this, so I've decided that I'm going to read pretty much everything that Renee Adier puts out. So I do plan to read The Flame and the Mist. I know a lot of people don't really like that book, but I want to give it a shot and I probably will like it. My opinion usually is different from other people. I'm usually easily pleased, so I don't imagine it being a problem. So after reading that, I am definitely in a fantasy mood and I've decided to pick up Throne of Glass. I have not started it. It's just a little bit over 400, not overly. It's four, 404 pages, so I don't anticipate this taking long. The font is like not so bad. I think the books later get bigger later on in the series, but I'm really excited. This is definitely a fantasy, definitely YA fantasy, which is what I love. It was between this and Shatter Me, and when I was reading the synopsis for both, this definitely got my attention more than Shatter Me. I still want to read Shatter Me. Shatter Me sounds more juvenile a little bit, <laughs> where this is more up my alley, which is like an interesting fantasy, and I'm excited to actually like get to know these characters. Characters. I've managed to 
keep myself spoil free. I don't know how that's possible, but I definitely have. With any book that I've been wanting to read, I usually skip people talking about it because I don't want to be spoiled. So I've managed to do that with this series. I have lots of books to get through, but I'm excited. I, like, I anticipate really enjoying this series and I'm very happy that I have it. So that is my update for right now. I probably won't get to reading until this afternoon. And then my husband and I are going out to see Aladdin, which I'm really excited about. I anticipate that not being that great, but it's kind of fun and fitting to go see Aladdin after reading The Rose and the Daggers. So it's definitely, it definitely got me more excited to see Aladdin. Before, I don't think I was gonna go see it, but now I am. So that is my update for right now. I probably will update you tomorrow. So it's been a while since I've updated you and it's because I haven't really been reading that much. So I said I was gonna start Throne of Glass and I read like a chapter. So I almost don't count me reading that, but I wasn't in the mood to physically read. So plus I had a audiobook come in on my overdrive through the library. So I decided to start listening to it because I only had so much time to listen. The and world to know how much it hurt. Whoops. And I thought, you know, it's a five hour audiobook. I'll just listen to it. I didn't finish it last night, but I just kind of laid in bed and listened to it. And I think that is how I need to listen to audiobooks. I'm struggling to figure out how I should be reading audiobooks because I kind of don't like them. And I think what I've learned is I can't multitask. My brain isn't strong enough for that. So, um, but I can lay in bed and listen to the audiobook just fine. And it's nonfiction. I find I really like that the best. Anyways, I think this is the best way to pull it up. It's called The Year of Less. I don't know if you could see that. Up and down. The Year of Less, and the author's name is Kate Flanders, and she ended up being Canadian, so it's a Canadian book, which I thought it was kind of a happy surprise. And um, she takes a year to basically cut back on her spending, and she's a blogger, so a lot of her reporting on her year is actually on her blog, but this is kind of a more in-depth look. And for one thing, like I'm really enjoying myself listening to it, I'm finding it interesting. I wish I got more of an insight to her spending less, like she is talking about it, but I kind of wanted more practical explanations and more practical how it's affecting her. And she does go into it, but she kind of goes into a more in-depth personal level, which I guess is still really interesting and informative. I guess I wanted more like surface level. <laughs> I don't know, that sounds weird, but I was kind of hoping that this audiobook would be more lighthearted and it's not lighthearted at all because she explores her life, not just through this experiment, but her past life and um, she struggled with alcoholism and drugs and she struggled with overeating and so it's kind of a definitely a darker tone novel which or a memoir I should say. I wasn't expecting that. I'm still really enjoying it and I'm finding it really interesting but major trigger warning for alcohol abuse, drug abuse, um, overeating, there's even domestic violence in here, and trigger warning for depression. Like there was a lot of trigger warnings for something like this which I was not anticipating. It does make it for a really interesting um, story, definitely a more hard-hitting one, and I found myself really engrossed. Like, I liked her writing style really well. I liked the story that she had to tell. It just wasn't what I was expecting. Another trigger warning for um, divorce, if that will bother you, and um, I'm trying to think what else there is, but I think that's a lot of the trigger warnings that I can think of right now. Just a lot more than I was expecting. So, um, would I recommend it? I think I would recommend it more for a hard-hitting storytelling and hard-hitting reflection on how, I don't know. <laughs> I would recommend it more for the topics she brings up, like the alcoholism and um, her drug abuse and just like a memoir on how she got to that point than necessarily the year of spending less. I think in a way, this experiment that she went on helped her explore these things even further. Now, at this point during this experiment, she is not abusing alcohol or drugs or really overeating. She's This is after she's gotten sober and changed her life around and here this is more an exploration on how to now manage her money and get back on track on saving more diligently. I have less than two hours left. I only listen it on 1.2 speed. I'm not a fast listener. I'm a slow listener um, but I am enjoying it so I either may finish it tonight 
or not. But this is where I am going to end the vlog for this week. Yeah, and then next week is Buzzwordathon. So I think that will be my next vlog. It will be for that. So I'm going to end the vlog here, guys. Thank you so much for watching if you're still at the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not done so. You can follow me on Goodreads, Twitter, and Instagram. And you know what, guys? I want you to keep reading. Bye.